but we could do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. All right, those who can and will, please stand and let's sing our first song. Behold what manner of love. <clears throat> Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. And behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. What manner of love the Father has given unto us, that we should be called the sons of God, that we should be called the sons of God. And our next hymn is, Greater is He that is in me. Greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me than he is that in the world. Greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me than he that is in me. You need oxygen. <laughs> that wasn't that fast. Come on. But amen. I'm thankful that we can sing that and mean that and know that uh, and not just wish that was something that was true. Amen? amen. And we're so thankful that greater is he that is in us than he is in the world. And of course, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. And we're so thankful for that this morning. Amen. 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 Let's look, Lord, in prayer today. Ask his blessing as we uh, open our service up today. Andy, would you open us up this morning, please? Amen. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated this morning. We are glad that you are out and about in God's house today. Are you ready to worship the Lord together? If you said no, you're in the wrong place. All right. How many of you knew you were in church today? All right. Amen. We're glad you're here to worship together. Uh, we have any very first time guests. We want to uh, greet you this morning. I know at least one we have right back here in the back. Any other very first timers? We want to just welcome you today. All right. Everybody else is seasoned veterans. All right. If you would, uh, Steve, right? Okay. If you would, just fill that out, and, and I'll meet you in the lobby after church. Give me that card, and I'll give you a nice gift for being our guest today, all right? We appreciate you being with us. Thank you so much. Uh, somehow, he's a cousin of Roger's. I, I, now, 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 listen, I promise we wouldn't hold it against him, okay? So you show him love. You be kind to him, uh, even though he's related to Roger somehow, all right? And uh, be good to him. So anyways, but uh, I want to remind you just a couple things. Don't forget our sign-up sheets in the lobby, please. If you're going to help with our candy connection, uh, make sure you get signed up. Our bucket is empty again. We need to fill that a couple more times at least uh, before we're ready for our activity uh, coming up. Um, I, I mentioned this to a couple people. The, uh, the school and several businesses along 4th Street are actually doing something on Saturday evening. 
Uh, and last year we did ours on Saturday after the schools and it all kind of worked out and flowed. Uh, we're scheduled to do ours on Monday, um, and I've been debating whether or not to switch it to Saturday and pick up all that traffic, but I'm thinking from what I'm, what I'm talking and hearing is parents are going to bring their kids out anyway, so we'll be the main attraction on Monday. So come with a smile, come prepared to work, okay, and uh, hopefully we'll reach a lot of people for Christ. And if you haven't signed up, there's still time to. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can volunteer to do, just passing out the candy. There's going to be gospel tracks. We're going to give out pre toys. We got all kinds of good stuff this year. We're going to give away a, a trampoline, a uh, nice big brand new trampoline. We're going to not auction it off, but we're going to have them fill out a card, and then we'll draw a call, uh, uh, out of that, and, and somebody will win that. So a lot of good stuff going on. We're going to give away some... Um, tokens for the ice cream shop, uh, all kinds of good stuff. So, uh, so if you haven't signed up to help and you still want to, please do. We would love to have you. And looking forward to that coming up. And then there's, of course, the music sign-up sheet, all that kind of stuff is out there. So uh, please feel free to sign up for that. Yes, ma'am. For the elderly? <laughs> we can bring a few chairs, yes. Or if you have like one of those camping bag chairs and you want to bring it, that's fine. Most of the ones passing out the candy, you're pretty much up the whole time just because of the flow. But there are some times you can sit down if you need to. So yes, we, we will have a few chairs. We don't bring a ton, but we, we can bring a few. Yeah. Yep. You're very welcome. Amen. So, but any other questions, feel free to ask. And if not, just sign up and uh, bring some candy, 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 and more candy. If you said, I've already brought three bags, bring three more. <laughs> we go through it pretty quickly. So, but uh, we appreciate your help with that. And a lot of other things going on that night. The church is uh, uh, using that as an outreach tool. So please, if you can help, we would appreciate it much. You cannot eat the candy until all the kids are done. And then you can eat some. All right. <laughs> Two pieces. That's it. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. But uh, anyways. Hey, before Kathy comes this morning, uh, we got a brand new piano. I don't know if you noticed that or not. Uh, but we got a nice new piano over here. So we're going to showcase it a little bit this morning. So we're going to welcome each other. Shake some hands. Walk around a little bit, just a couple of minutes, okay, and uh, greet everybody. Go to the bathroom if you need to, whatever, but uh, just uh, say hi to everybody and be howdy for a little bit while she plays through some nice fancy song. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, shake hands for a few moments. All right, let's go. <laughs> I am. <laughs> well, that was pretty lively, wasn't it? Okay, open your bulletins this morning to our announcements. We've got quite a few. Uh, most of them are kind of reviews, but let's take a look at them. Our business meeting is coming up on October 19th. It'll be here in the sanctuary, 7 o'clock, and that's where we'll go over our third quarter financials, etc. The bridal shower for our bride-to-be, Teresa, is coming up on the 22nd. That's on a Saturday here at the Fellowship Hall. Uh, it'll be from 2 in the afternoon to 4, and it's going to be just a wonderful time. Uh, communion, we're going to have a communion service at, uh, on Wednesday, the 26th of October at 7 o'clock, and that'll be here in the sanctuary, and that'll be in place of our regular Bible study, but it'll be a lovely time. Uh, fifth Sunday Sing, uh, we've talked a lot about that lately, and there's a sign-up sheet, uh, be sure, and... Um, it's going to be a busy day. You come to uh, worship with us in the morning and then stay for the potluck after the service. And then uh, there will be um, a covered, covered dish, or the covered dish dinner. And then after that, there will be a, a time of music here in the sanctuary. And sign up if you plan to uh, take part in that. Um, candy connection, we've heard about that. Bring that candy. Thanksgiving dinner. There's also a sign-up sheet for the Thanksgiving dinner that's coming up. And uh, we haven't said this before, but the Plutz are going to be hosting that as they have so many times. And they do such a lovely job. So we appreciate their work on that. That'll be, of course, on Thursday, the 24th of November. And it's 2 o'clock here in the Fellowship Hall. So if you can bring a side dish or a dessert, uh, plan to do that. And then indicate what you're going to bring. And that'll help uh, so that we have a variety of, of dishes. Christmas shoe boxes, we've talked a lot about the Christmas shoe boxes lately, and the due date for that, for the turning those in, is November 13th. So uh, I know you saw that there are lots of shoe boxes already filled out there, so that's a wonderful thing. Our directory, we've talked so much about that too. So uh, be sure and double check the draft that's there, and we're going to get that finished up soon. 
October. Oh, there's another announcement about the kids' activity time. Uh, it's going to be on Sunday, November 6th, and it's going to be a fun activity after the morning service. So kids, invite your friends. They will enjoy it. Birthdays and anniversaries, and by the way, check that birthday list. There's a special one today. So uh, choir practice today at 5 o'clock, and our music for Christmas will be practiced at 5.15, evening service at 6 and 7 on Wednesday. Our next hymn is Peace Like a River. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. Peace like a river. Like a 
fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. Joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I'm not going to do to you what we're going to do. We're going to go, I got peace, love, and joy. We're not going to do that. <laughs> Our next hymn is Wonderful Words of Life. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty sing, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and beauty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words. Wonderful words of life, all for pardon and peace to all. Wonderful words of life, Jesus only Savior, sanctify forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life, beautiful words. Next hymn, there shall be showers of blessings. And folks, it's already partly cloudy, so we got. <laughs> there shall be showers of blessings. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessings, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessings, send them to us, O the Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing, come and now honor thy word. Showers of blessings, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessings, oh that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now as on Jesus we call. blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Shackled by a heavy burden, neath the load of guilt and shame, then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I am no longer the same he touched me oh he touched me and oh the joy 
that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me Since I've met this blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout it while he turns. He touched me, oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Amen. And we're going to go ahead and dismiss our junior church. Frank was singing that old time song and I started drifting back to the old days. I thought we were sitting at Cracker Barrel there for just a minute. Nice and soothing and comfortable, you know. Amen. It's good. Aren't you thankful for the touch of Jesus? Amen. Wouldn't it have been awesome if I was preaching on the touch of Jesus this morning? I would just went hand in hand. I'm not, but uh, wouldn't it have been awesome if I were? Amen. Well, if you have a Bible this morning, Acts chapter 28, please. Acts chapter number 28. We concluded our series last week uh, on, on those relationships, one another. And uh, we're going to just uh, have a couple, a week or two probably of uh, a couple messages. And I've got another uh, series I'd like to present to you on Sunday mornings. I think will help us as well. But uh, today we're going to be in Acts chapter number 28. And we're going to look at the first 10 verses. And I'll have that up here on the screen here for you if you don't have a Bible with you. Uh, we're going to look at the topic this morning of build up the fire. And I'm going to be very honest with you. The outline is not good. Hopefully the content is better than the outline, all right? But uh, anyway, it's from the Word of God, so it can't be bad, right? But uh, let's look at Acts chapter 28. If you found that you're able to this morning, stand with me, please, out of respect for the reading of God's Word. And again, we'll pick up at verse number 1 and read down through verse number uh, 10 together uh, this morning. The Bible says, And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, everyone, because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said amongst themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live." And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Hallelujah. Praise King Jesus. That's where every one of them types of beasts belong. In the fire. Amen. Amen. It's in the Bible. Amen. It's scriptural. Look at verse 6. I like snakes, Pastor. They're God's creatures. It's in the Bible. He's put it in the fire. Amen. Get off my case. Look at verse 6. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly... But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was uh, Publius, uh, who's received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the island, came and were healed, who also honored us with many honors. And when we departed, they laded us with such things as were necessary. 
And let's pray together this morning. We'll be seated. Father, we thank you this morning for your love and goodness. We thank you for the time we've had to worship you. It's been good to sing uh, songs of praise to you, Lord, and just magnify you even through music. And uh, we're thankful uh, for what was just sung, Lord. We're thankful for the touch of Almighty God upon our lives. May we never uh, forget about that. May we never uh, uh, take it for granted, Lord. May we always be thankful for your touch. Father, we ask as we open your word now for the next few moments, we pray that you'll bless the preaching. Empty me of sin and self, please, this morning. Fill me with your Holy Spirit's power and love. And Lord, may I say exactly what you would want said, please. And may you use the message, Lord, to challenge us, to move us forward, and to, Lord, maybe even to convict us in areas if we need convicting. And Lord, just use it for your perfect will and way, we pray. And as always, Lord, if there's someone here or watching that does not know Christ, we pray today would be the day they recognize their, their need for you and your love for them and would trust you uh, with their heart and their life today, we pray. We thank you again for the time we've had. Bless the remainder time we have of preaching now. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Man, thank you. You can be seated. We uh, probably are somewhat familiar with this passage and what happened here. Uh, of course, Paul is on this boat. He is traveling, uh, headed to Rome. And of course, we see in chapter 27, a great storm overtakes this boat, capsizes the boat, tears the boat apart. All the prisoners are in the water. Uh, the guards are not quite sure what to do. They're thinking about just starting to kill all the prisoners because if you know, one escapes, they're in trouble with their lives. And uh, Paul assures them. He says, no, 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 it's okay. It's all good. We're all here. Uh, God's got this. Uh, it's fine, all right? And so they make their way here on, on board, some of them, and swimming, some of them. And they hit this little island that's right there called Melita. And as they get to this island, you've got to figure this out, okay? Now think about this with me for just a minute. They, they've been out all night in this boat. The boat faced shipwreck. Uh, they're, they're thrown overboard. Some of them had to swim to this island. Some of them are on boards paddling this island. These guys get to this island, and it's not for a holiday, it's not, hey, we hit land, let's have vacation. These guys are tired. They're weary. Their strength has run, run from them. They've been battling getting to this particular place. They're confused. They don't know exactly where they are. They don't know what awaits them. They don't know the current situation. The Bible tells us there was barbarous people living there. Not necessarily the, the people you want to build a home next to, all right? And, and so it wasn't like, hey, we're going there. These are great people. They somewhat knew of the people and, and had some sort of, uh, of timidness about these people. But they get there, and of course, they're greeted with kindness by the Barrier's people. Wow, hello. Come on, Christian. <laughs> if the barbarian people can treat strangers kindly, how much more should the people of Christ? Amen? Amen, okay. So they get there, they've got this fire going, and they take time and they, they build up this fire for these people that are coming out of the water from this crash boat here onto the island. Now, I want you to think about that fire for just a minute, okay? Think about what that fire is going to do. First of all, it's going to comfort them. It's going to comfort them. It's going to change their condition. They were cold. They were wet. They were weary. Now they're going to become dry, and they're going to, they're going to become warm, and they're going to become comforted. This fire would guard them from the elements. The rain was there. The cold was there. This would help protect them and shield them from that. This was a very important thing uh, in this particular journey. This fire that was built uh, and then built up upon for these men, very crucial for them. You know, I, I couldn't help but think today as we, we talk about building up the fire. Uh, we as Christians this morning, we have a responsibility to God. And that responsibility is very simple. We should be on fire for God. You know, we spent 10 weeks talking about building our relationships within the church. You know why we do all that? So that we can have a fire brewing inside of us to then represent Christ to the unsaved world. Uh, we ought to have a fire inside of us. You know, I thought about that and I couldn't help think. Christians today, more than ever before, are tired. They're weak. They're confused. And are looking at their situations in life saying, what in the world should I do? Right? You know what's needed more now than ever? The fire of God. The fire of the Holy Spirit that's inside of us, that, that, that fires up and ignites our passion in such a way that we live it out then in front of people and we reach people with Christ and they see the goodness of our God just because of the fire that God has put inside of us. That's what's needed more than anything. Now, what do you think about the Christian fire, the Holy Ghost? Guess what? He, he does the same thing the fire did for these men. He'll comfort you. You're thankful for the comforting of the Holy Spirit in your life? But you know what? He'll also change your condition. 
Amen. If you're saved this morning, there should have been a change in your life. And there's continual change because there's continual growth. And the Holy Spirit and the fire of God and the power of God is what propitiates that in our life and moves it forward. Perpetuates, not propitiates, sorry. Y'all knew what I was saying. <laughs> it, it, it changes our condition. You know what? Holy Spirit also guards us from the elements and the enemies, doesn't it? <laughs> Isn't it nice to know that if we'll stoke the fire of God in our hearts and our lives, that fire will do more than just one or two things for us? It does a whole lot for us. By the way, I want to say this real quick because I want us to be clear as Christians. When they got to this island... These men that, that floated up and swam up and rode on boards up there and got there, these soldiers, these, these prisoners, Paul himself, this was, this was not a new fire that they built. That fire was already going. That fire was already going, and they built up and rekindled that fire that was already there. They didn't have to start from scratch. How are we going to do this without a lighter? But it's rainy. How are we going to handle this? This was a fire that just needed fuel added to it because it was already in existence. Hey, Christians, can I just challenge you this, this morning? We don't need a new fire. We don't need some new revelation from the Lord on how to be on fire. When you got saved, you got the fire of the Holy Spirit inside of you, period. And I know there's some of you in this room, you got saved many years ago. And when you got saved, you experienced that change. You were so thankful for what God had done. You were excited. You were growing. You were going. You were doing. You were serving. You were telling everybody you knew. And then 20 years later, oh, well, you know, I've gotten a little older. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little feeble. <laughs> and, and, and what happened? That fire started to dwindle. But can I say this, as long as you're saved, which is forever, amen? amen? As long as you're saved, the fire is still there. The problem is, it needs rekindled every now and then. It needs stoked every now and then. It needs blown upon and, and, and new life put into it. We don't have to come up with some new way, a new finagled way to start a fire in our hearts and our life. The same fire that was found in, in, in Acts chapter 2 at Pentecost. You remember when 3,000 people got saved and were added to the church? That same fire is the same fire we have inside of us. That same Holy Spirit is the same Holy Spirit we have inside of us today. Still there. God is still real. God is still moving. God is still saving souls. God is still changing lives. We've come to the point many times in our Christianity where we've allowed the fire to die down. We've allowed the fire to die down. That same Pentecost fire, that same Pentecost power, that same power of God is not gone. Although the world likes to look at churches who have dwindled away and said, Oh, look, they've it's not gone. It's there. It's there. Unfortunately, some Christians need to stoke the fire. Christians need to wake up this morning. Amen. Christians need to get back to the place where they're on fire for God again. The fire has not gone out. The problem is many times God's people have stopped stoking the fire. We need to stoke it. Blow on it. Feed it. Use those, use those bellows a little bit. Amen. And again, see the flames of God evident in our lives. Here's the thing, Christian. I want to understand this. If, if we have a handful of Christians that will truly grasp us and allow the fire of God to, to fire up in their hearts and in their lives, you know what happens? Just like fire, it spreads. You, you want to see, you wanna see the nation reached for Christ? You want to see our nation back to the country, one country under God, one nation under God? You want to see that? It's going to start with individual Christians. That spreads to the church. That spreads to the town that they're in. That spreads to the state that they're in. That spreads to the world, that the country they're in. That spreads to the world that we're in. But it starts with us. It's time that we realize we as Christians have been too complacent. Amen, preacher! We've gotten lazy on God. We've gotten lackadaisical. We've got no, somebody else will do it. Huh? And that fire started to dwindle, and it affects not just our own lives, but it affects the church, it affects the cause of Christ, it affects the kingdom of God when Christians aren't stoking the fire. I want to give you some thoughts this morning about this fire and building up this fire so that we can get back to the place where people can look at us, our lives, look at our church and say, hey, the power of God is still real. 
hey, God is still working today and still moving today. I want to look at a couple of things about the fire here that's so badly needed in Christianity. This is a simplistic message, a simplistic outline. But this fire is so needed today in our Christian lives. This faith of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit inside of us that, 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 that brings revival and empowers us like never before is needed in our lives. Christian, I'm going to give you four quick thoughts, okay? Four thoughts. And by the end of this message, I want us to be thinking about this. Will I be willing to build up the fire? I'm not talking about will I build it for my neighbor or for my, for my guy sitting next to me. Will I build the fire that already is inside of me in my life? Will I stoke it? Will I, will I oxygenate it? Oh, you like that word? Will I throw some fuel on it? Will I make sure that that fire never goes out? But it's burning constantly for the cause of Christ and people can see the love of God in me. What will I do with the fire? Number one, so simple. The fire has to be fed. The fire has to be fed. If you don't feed the fire, eventually, the fire's going to go out. Now, I know the Holy Spirit can't leave our lives, but His power that we should be able to display sure can become very little. We sure can have no effect for the cause of Christ in the world in which we live when we don't feed the fire. Now, now again, our scripture illustrates this. We see this in Acts 28. You, you say, well, I'm tired, Pastor. I've been saved for a long time. I've been serving God. It's time for a younger person to step up. I'm weak. I'm frail. Can I just say this today? It doesn't matter what age you are, what physical condition you are, how long you've been saved recently or a long time ago, what you've done for Christ in the past. What matters is this. You still have to feed the fire today. You still have to feed the fire now to keep it burning. We have to feed the fire ourselves. Boy, I love this passage of scripture. Paul, he's shipwrecked. He, he, by the way, you, th you really think Paul wants to get to the destination? That's where he's facing death penalty, okay? You really think he wants to get there? He gets off of this, uh, this shipwreck. He gets out of the water. He comes up to the, to the shore there. And what's the first thing you see Paul doing? Gathering sticks. Paul said, you know what? Hey, thanks for the fire. Thanks. We thought you were barbarians. Thanks for your uh, no lack of kindness. Thank you for that. We appreciate that. Let me help you. And he goes out and he starts bundling and gathering sticks. And he brings them into the fire. And he feeds the fire himself. Paul, most high servant of the almighty God. <laughs> the, the writer of, of a good portion of the New Testament. He's out gathering sticks to feed the fire. Christian, can I just challenge you? I want you, to understand, I want you to get this today, okay? You have to feed your own fire. And here's the problem in many of our churches today. We're waiting for some evangelist to come in and stoke the fire. We're waiting for some preacher to preach some powerful message that moves us to action. We're waiting for some singing group to sing a song that we break down at and we cry and we realize God's speaking. Hey, listen, it's not up to them to feed the fire. They can add to it. we got to feed the fire ourselves we got to collect the sticks. Oh, we got to feed the fire. Uh, we got to ask God to ignite that passion inside of me to live for Him in a wonderful way, in, in a consistent way, and in a committed way. Ask God to develop the talents He's given me to use for Him. That'll stoke the fire. That'll stoke the fire. Feed the fire. Feed the fire. By the way, I like this about Paul as well. Paul did... <laughs> And I'm pointing this out because <laughs> this is an issue. <laughs> Paul did not wait for the conditions to get better before he went and got the sticks. He went in the rain. He went in the cold. He went in his tired and weak and frail nature that he was in at that particular moment. He didn't say, well, when the sun starts shining a little bit, I'll get on board. And, and the problem many times with Christians in this fire and this power of the Holy Spirit is this. We're waiting for better conditions. Oh, when my church does, then I will. Oh, when my family does, then I will. Oh, when government... <laughs> don't count on government for anything, amen? Except taxes. Well, when this... No, 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 no. There's no, I'll feed the fire when. I'll feed the fire if. I got to feed the fire. I got to feed the fire. David said in his darkest days, I encouraged myself in the Lord. Feed the fire. 
Feed the fire. Tough times are there. Difficult days are ahead. Burdens will, will overtake you. Heartbreak sets in. Listen, don't allow those things to quench the fire. Use even those difficult times as times to feed the fire. Because if you don't feed the fire, it's going to fizzle out. It's going to fizzle out, hurt the cause of Christ. Number two, the fire has a price. The fire has a price. If you ever go camping or glamping, as many of you I know are guilty of, you go to the local gas station down the road and you buy some firewood. You ain't out there splitting it yourself. There's a price. <laughs> You're paying the six ninety nine for the whatever of sticks, right? Or twelve ninety nine inflation twenty ninety nine. The fire has a price. Look at the price Paul pays. He is simply number one, trying to help everyone that's there, trying to help himself, trying to show love. He's building up this fire so their condition can be changed and they can have comfort and warmth, right? And he goes and he bundles these sticks. And what happens? He brings them and he puts them on the fire. And what happened? It brings out a snake. It brings out a viper. He stirred up the beast with his actions. Paul said, I'm going to do something good. And the viper said, oh yeah, I'll teach you a lesson about that. Paul goes out and he, and he, and he pays this price. He, he brings these sticks in. He, he feeds the fire. And, and all of a sudden, he gets bit by a stinking snake. That doesn't seem fair, does it? That doesn't seem right. He was simply trying to help. Can I tell you this, Christian? When you get on fire for God, there is a price to pay. When you get on fire for God, guess what's going to happen? Your actions are going to stir up the snakes. When you get on fire for God, uh, your actions are going to stir up the enemy. You get on fire for God and the Holy Spirit begins to work and you begin to live right and you begin to point people to the Savior and people look at your life and say, man, God's all over them. Guess what? The snakes are coming, friend. Boy, I love Paul's reaction. I love Paul's reaction. He's got this venomous viper hanging off his hand. And you know what Paul does? He looks at old viper in the eye and he says, not today, Satan. Not today, boy. And he shakes that thing off back into the fire where it belongs. Amen? He shakes it off. He doesn't allow it to affect him. He doesn't allow it to deter him. He doesn't allow it to stop him. He doesn't allow it to change his attitude. I would have been cussing that old snake. I'm just going to tell you, all right? Okay, maybe not, but I would have been angry. He doesn't allow it to affect his demeanor. He shakes it off and gets back to business as normal. There's a price to pay. Hey, Christian, you stoke the fire. You live right. You start to experience that Holy Ghost power in your life. I'm going to tell you something. The devil's going to be real quick to stick his old ugly head up. The devil's going to be real quick to attack. The world's going to be real quick to fight you and to mock you. And to criticize you. And to tell you you're crazy. You start living for God and get on fire for God. And living right. And, and, and you know fighting for holiness and doing all those things. I got bad news for you but this is true. There's a price to pay. Your family's going to question you. Your family's going to question you. Your friends might ridicule you. I hate to say it. But sometimes that venomous uh, viper shows up and bites you in the hand in the form of another Christian. Hey, you need to settle down, son. All this that you got going on, we don't want that here. You, you're so on fire, man. You're so loud about it. You're so woo woo woo. Follow. Hey, that, you, tone it down a little bit. I'm gonna tell you something. You get on fire for God. The snakes are coming. The snakes are coming. There's plenty of snakes in the fire waiting just to, you to show up, you to do what's right, you to live for God, you to stoke that fire, you to make a difference, you to serve God, you to point people to Savior. And when you start doing that, the vipers come out. And they'll bite you. They'll try to hurt you. They'll try to deter you. They'll try to stop you. Can I challenge you this morning? Shake it off. Shake it off. It, this is in the Bible way before Taylor Swift started singing it. Because I know some of you, that's exactly what you were thinking. 
I had to ask my daughter this morning, who sings that song? I don't even know. <laughs> I, was, I, was so, I was truly heartbreaking that, broken that she knew. Taylor Swift. Shake it off. Shake it off. Pastor, I'm all alone in this big old world and I'm trying to do right and nobody's for me and nobody's with me and I'm making a stand all by myself. Shake it off. Well, I'm discouraged. Shake it off. Well, I'm, 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 I'm getting a little worried and, and I'm fearful and I'm afraid. Shake it off. Shake it off. Well, my best friend turned on me. They don't want anything to do with me anymore. They tell me if I keep talking about this Jesus, they don't want to even see me. Hey, shake it off. Pastor, I got burdens. Pastor, I got heartaches. Pastor, I got fears. Shake it off. Shake it off. Pastor, I don't think you understand. I'm being persecuted. I've been falsely accused of things. People have hurt me that are close to me. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Well, Pastor, you don't understand my past. Hey, let me give you the best information I'm ever going to give you about your past. Shake it off. Your past doesn't define you. Your past doesn't matter for your present or for your future. Shake it off. You want to get this fire burning? You want to stoke this fire? Pay the price. Sell out for Christ. Go all in. And when you do, the venomous vipers are going to raise their ugly heads. You look at them square in the eye and say, not today, Satan. And you shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. The price of paying this fire is worth it. You feed the fire, it has to be fed. The fire has a price. Let me give you number three. Let me give you some logs to feed the fire. Paul went and he collected some sticks. He collected some wood for this fire. You want to stoke the fire of God in your life to the point where you're living right. Man, people see God in you. You're sharing His love. You're pointing people to the Savior, man. You're striving for a whole... You, you, you want to get to that point? You got to feed the fire. You say, well, what do I feed it? I'm going to give you a couple of simple things. The Word of God. The Word of God. You hold it on your lap this morning. God's given us a book that will change our lives. He's given us a book that will guide us and lead us in every course, every path, every step that we need to take in life. The Bible says the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It's sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. He's given us a powerful book, a guidebook, a guideline that says this. You want to feed the fire? Get your nose in that. Turn... Turn off Facebook and get in the book. Amen? Yeah, amen. That's for all of us. Amen? I'm not against social media. What I'm saying is this. This is more important than my Facebook account and how many friends I got. Because most of those friends aren't real friends anyways. They're a number on a page. Somebody that follows me and once in a while every three years says, Hey, come on. The Word of God will never leave you. <laughs> the Word of God will never forsake you. The Word of God will never change with the seasons and with the times and with the culture and with society. The Word of God stays true. Amen. You want to feed the fire? Soak that thing up. Amen. Meditate on it day and night. Joshua said the only way you find success is to meditate on God's Word day and night. Amen. You want to feed the fire? Word of God. Word of God. How's our relationship with the Bible? You want to feed the fire? Worship. Worship. And by the way, I, just, I, want, I want to clarify here, okay? I'm not saying come to church on Sunday and worship. Okay? Although you should, I think. Okay? And we should worship God here, okay? Do you realize this? Worship is played out in so many different arenas and areas of our life than just coming to church. And just singing a few songs with words on the screen and every now and then raising our hand. Worship is more than a song. Okay? Worship is more than, you know, the, the, the lights flickering and the smoke driving and, and some words that, ooh, that really spoke to me and moved me today. Worship is so much greater than that. And you want to stoke the fire? Let me encourage you. Learn to worship God in every area of life. Every, you ought to worship God at home. You ought to worship God while you're driving your car. That's where you need it the most. Get that road rage out, amen? (laughs) 
I love pulling up stoplights beside people and they look over at me and I've got my Jesus music playing and I'm singing at the top of my lungs and they're looking at me like, that's a weirdo. I'm just worshiping. I'm just worshiping. We, we got, we, if I want to stoke the fire, I need to learn to give Jesus his proper place, which is number one. Preeminence. He must be increased. I must be decreased. He must be lifted up. I, like Jesus, must point people to the Savior. Worship. You want to stoke the fire? Worship. By the way, let me just, let me just throw this in here since you asked, since you brought it up. <laughs> While you're at church worship, yeah. while you're here, you, you might as well go ahead and enjoy worship. Yeah. Well, I don't know that song. That's okay. I didn't know him once either. I'll mumble and stumble along. I'll read the words if I have to. I'll do whatever it takes. But I want to be involved in the worship. By the way, before you ever step foot in these doors, you ought to have had a time, a time in your life where you sat down with God and said, God, feed me today. God, grow me today. God, correct me today. God, inspire me today. God, let me worship you today. And you enter into his presence with that attitude already implanted. I'm here to worship. I'm here to worship. I'm not here to celebrate Alicia's birthday. <laughs> Although 65 is a big milestone. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just teasing you. She's not 65. I'm kidding. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to show off my, my socks, although they are pretty cool today. <laughs> Woo! These are my flamingo socks. I actually had a blue. A light blue colored vest on to match the socks. Change the vest, forgot to change the socks. So there you go. I'm not here for that, <laughs> okay? I, I'm not here for smiles and handshakes, although that's all part of it, and I love that, and I enjoy that. I love seeing your smile on face. I, I, I want to worship. I want to worship. You, do you realize this? I, want, I need to move on here. i got to hurry. You realize that one day, for eternity... You're going to stand in the very presence of the King of Kings. The very Savior who stretched out his hands, took the nails, took the whip, and gave up, gave up his life, crushed for us. You're going to stand in his presence. You know what you're going to do for eternity? You're going to worship him. You're going to worship him. We might as well start practicing, amen? You want to stoke the fire? Learn to worship him. Boy, boy let, his, let, let the song speak to you. Let the message speak to you. Let friendship speak to you. Let the love of God flow through you and speak to you. Worship. I don't stoke the fire. The word of God, worship. How about witnessing? You want to see a fire kindled in your heart like nothing before? Go tell somebody about Jesus. For, for, for five minutes, forget about your burdens. Forget about your timetable. Forget about your problems. Forget about your needs. And for five minutes, share the gospel with somebody and see the lights in their eyes light up and see their heart open up before the Savior and see them realize, hey, I'm in sinner in need of a Savior. I'll trust this God that you're telling me about. I want him in my life. I, I want him as my father. I want to join the family. You talk about a fire, my friend. That'll do it. That's a log. Witness. How about this one? Walking worthy. I cannot stoke the fire of the Holy Spirit of God in my heart and live in sin. Now, I'm going to sin. I, I, we understand that, okay? We're not perfect. We're going to sin. Of course, we have access to the Father to ask for forgiveness. We, we understand all that. But if I'm living in open, deliberate, purposeful sin, there's no way I'm stoking the fire of the Holy Spirit. There's no way I'm going to be on fire for God that's in an effective manner that's going to reach people for Christ if I'm living in sin. Walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you were called. You're called to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. You're called to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Hey, you know, if the salt is lost its savor, it's no good. If the light's hidden under a bushel, it's no good. You want to stoke the fire? Walk worthy. Walk worthy. Because the more I'm conscientious about walking worthy, striving for righteousness and holiness, although I'll never reach perfection until I get to heaven, amen? But, but the more I try... Guess what? The more that fire begins to grow. The more that fire is evident in my life for somebody else to see. 
Walk worthy. Walk worthy. Those are some logs to feed the fire. Let me give you this last thought, number four. Number four, the results of the fire. The results of the fire. I love this fact that when Paul helped rekindle and rebuild and add to this fire and it provided warmth and changed the atmosphere of the thing, I love it how there were other results besides just that. I put down three thoughts. Number one, people are helped when you're on fire. When that fire of God is evidently burning in your heart and in your life, and people can look at you and say, man, God is all over them. Woo! People will be helped. You realize that you re we read that passage of Scripture. Did you see all the people that Paul healed that came to him? People got help. Those prisoners were cold and wet and tired. They were helped. The Roman soldiers who said, well, let's just kill them all. They got help. All kinds of people are indirectly or directly helped because Paul said, I'm going to get the fire going. Huh? You realize this morning when you get on fire for God, just like sin doesn't just affect you, your fire doesn't just affect you. It affects those around you. People begin to take notice. People begin to wonder, what in the world's different with that guy? Hey, what is he up to? Hey, what's going on, man? What, I, I don't, somebody explain this to me. And people are helped. Sometimes God uses you because you're in tune with him and because you're on fire. God uses you to be the conduit of the help. He uses you to help somebody who's in a situation maybe that you were once in and you made it through because of the power of God. People are helped when we're on fire. You ever, you ever walked into a church and... You walked in, and it was dead. It was silent. Maybe a couple of people over here were chatting a little bit. Maybe a couple people were here. And you walked in, and all rise. Let's worship Jesus together in song. And the service had no life to it. The preaching, the biblical exhortation had no life to it. Yeah, huh? you preachers get up and read a little sermonette that they wrote and prepared. And don't even open the Word of God, <laughs> and you leave thinking they're not going to have a real big impact for Christ in this world. But you ever walked into a church and you felt the presence of God? You felt the excitement. The first hand you shook, Bonnie just resonated the love of God. Jay, not so much. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> J2, all right? Bonnie's usually the first one to hone in on. And she says, give me that old hug, right? And from the get-go, you feel the presence of Almighty God. And you sing, and you may not even know all the songs, but you sing some of them, and you give your best, and you just feel, hey, we're singing about that God. And then hopefully the preacher gets up and gives you a message about the Word of God that at least speaks to your heart a little bit about God, right? And you feel things. And you leave thinking, wow. If this church keeps going, and if I'm part of that that keeps going, man, we could turn this city upside down for Christ. It's a big difference. You want to help people? You want to help people? Help yourself first. And I'm not talking in a selfish way. I'm saying you get on fire. You get, listen, 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 listen. Listen in the back row. Don't you dare leave this place and pray that the preacher gets on fire. Don't you dare leave and pray that the deacon board gets the fire of God. You leave and pray that you get the fire of God. And if you get the fire of God, that will begin to spread to those around you. And guess what? Before long, we're going to be calling the fire department. Amen? And we're going to be making a difference for the cause of Christ. And when somebody says Calvary Baptist Church, they're going to say, Oh, that's that church that loves Jesus. That's that church that, wow, I can't even explain. People are helped when we allow the fire and the power of the Holy Spirit to truly exist and we stoke it and we build it and we allow it to be evident in our life. People are helped. Number two, God is blessed. God is glorified. God is glorified. You know, they thought Paul was a God and of course Paul, had, I'm sure, had this very simple conversation. No, 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 no I'm not a God. 
But let me tell you something. <laughs> I serve the God of all gods. <laughs> the one that got us all here alive on this island. Nobody died. Nobody swam away. The God that got us here, that's the one I serve. The reason I didn't swell, the reason I didn't drop dead has nothing to do with me being a God. It has everything to do with the power of God that's upon me. God is glorified. Listen, when you're on fire for God and you stoke that fire and you live out that fire in front of people and you're busy reaching the world for Christ, they may look at you and say, whoa, that person's on fire. But you know who truly ultimately gets the glory in the end? God does. God does. We don't live a life stoking that fire and building that fire for Christ so that we can say, I hope somebody says something good about me. We do it so somebody can see Jesus in us. We do it so somebody can know our God. God is glorified when I'm on fire. Oh, but we can't stop there. Number three, you're blessed. You are blessed. When Paul did what Paul did, and he shook it off. I mean, I can't, I can't even imagine Paul being one of our modern day preachers. Oh, it bit me. That's not fair. I'm a better speaker than that guy. He should have bit him. Well, somebody's going to have to pay for this robe to get dry clean because it got blood on it. Huh? I'm glad the Apostle Paul said, you know what? You ain't mean a thing to me, man. Shake it off. <laughs> and you know what happened? People were helped. God was glorified. And at the end, if you read verse number 10, it said they laded them with such things as they needed when they departed for the voyage. Can you stop for just a minute? It's a prison ship that, that crashes. They swim to this isle, okay? They get help from the barbarous people. By the way, can I take a, a sidebar? This is for free, okay? Maybe, maybe we shouldn't be so quick to judge people. Thank you. Oh, they're barbarous. Oh, well, they're this. Oh, well, they're that. We don't know how to deal with that. Oh, they're, maybe we should just say, hey, God, they're your people. Hey, God, they're your creation. Hey, God, if, if, if you'll work, if, if you'll use me to help them, I'll, I'll, I'll be available. Could you imagine if Paul would have gotten off this island and said, oh, these are bad people. Let's get, let's get back in the water. Huh? But because he did what he did, and because he built that fire, and because all that then spread to everybody that was there, guess what happened? When they left, those native people said, you know what? Let's give them stuff. Let's make sure they have what they need to make their journey. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not saying like our TV preachers today, if you live for God and if you're trying to be holy, he's going to send a million dollars your way. That's not what I'm saying. I wish, right? What I am saying is this. You live for God. You stoke the fire. You build the fire. And you live your life evident that that fire is there in existence. And you're reaching people for Christ. I'm going to tell you something. God is going to bless you. It may not be with money. It may not be with things. But God will bless you. And if you think, well, I, I haven't seen it in this life. Hey, just wait to the next, sister. God blesses when we stoke that fire. Christian, the reality today is very simple. We live in a tired, confused, mixed up world. The church is called... Be the light. The problem is this. Too many churches and too many Christians have allowed the fire of God to dwindle. Remember that day you got saved and God changed your life and He charted a new course. Man, everything became new and your old was past and you're living. For, you know how exciting that was? I talked to one evangelist. He said, I got saved. I got halfway, ha got halfway home after the service. I had to go back and get my car. That's how excited he was. Yeah. You remember that day? 
You realize it should be just as exciting today as it was then. The day the king of kings stooped from the portals of glory and saved your sorry soul ought to be just as exciting today as it was back then. But we started to let that fire dwindle. The answer for America today is not in the White House. It's, it's, it's not in our politicians. It's not in society. It's not in our public school system. The answer for America today is that judgment begins at the house of the Lord. The answer for the problems of America today is for Christians to start building up the fire. I'm not talking about starting something new. You don't have to. It's already there. I'm talking about building up what God's already put there. You want to make a difference for Christ? Shake it off and build up a fire. You, 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 you want to point people to the Savior? You want to, you want to have that fire that's, that's burning and exuding and people recognize who your God is because of what you do and how you do it? Listen, build up a fire, shake it off and build a fire some more. Because the attacks are going to come price are you willing to pay the price are you willing to burn this morning are you willing to say hey God it's not about me but it is about you and God if you'll use me and God if you'll empower me and God if you'll help me to build and to stoke this fire I'll do whatever you ask me to do God I'll say yes Lord yes to your will and to your ways the reality is this, I'm done. I'm going to close my Bible. I'm finished. The reality is this. Every single person sitting here this morning, the fire's there. No one's exempt. If you're saved this morning, the fire is there. The question is this. What will we do with the fire? We can continue a mediocre, complacent, carefree Christian life and allow the world around us to die and go to hell. Or we can say this. I'm going to build that fire. I'm going to stoke it. I'm going to wave cardboard at it. I'm going to blow it. I'm going to get the old bellows out. Man, I'm going to build a fire because I want people in tune with the Savior. When I want to get to, when I get to heaven... You ready for this? I want to bring a whole passel full of people along with me. Stoke the fire. Build up the fire. No one can do it for you. Don't count on me. <laughs> Ain't going to happen. Don't count on some evangelists. We, we can help. You got to feed the fire. You got to feed the fire. Be willing to pay the price. And when the price comes, shake it off. Too many Christians so controlled by their circumstances and by their problems and by their burdens and by their past. Shake it off. Yeah. All right? Add some fuel. Add some logs. And then just watch for the blessed results. Amen. Build up a fire. It's up to you and it's up to me. Amen. It's individual. Will you build the fire? Will you build the fire? Father, Lord, I pray you'll take... What's been preached this morning, I pray that you'll use it to help us. Convict us where we need convicting. Change us where we need change. Challenge us where we need challenged. Lord, we know that you have called us to be your instruments here on earth to make a difference. To point people to the Savior. To be your ambassadors here on earth. To be the salt and the light, Lord. And... Many churches, many Christians have lost the light. We've lost our effectiveness. We've lost the salt because we've allowed the fire to dwindle. Holy Spirit of God, I ask you today, burden our hearts to build the fire. Burden our hearts, Lord, to say, if I'm on fire, I can make a difference for Christ and there's blessed results. Burden our hearts to say, if I build up a fire, attacks of the enemy will come. I know that. People that I love and think would never turn on me might. But hey, I'm willing to shake it off and build that fire for the cause of Christ. God, please, 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 please 
May that be our vision and our burden and our goal today as Christians for our church. To build a fire. Heads are bowed this morning, eyes are closed, no one's looking. Just a brief invitation this morning. We'll sing and we'll be done. You're here today and you say, first of all, Pastor, no matter how big that fire is, that fire is in my heart, my life, because I'm saved. I know Christ as my personal Savior. If I were to die today, I'm on my way to heaven, not because of my church attendance or baptism or good works, but because I know Christ, I have a relationship with Him. I put my faith in the shed blood of Christ on Calvary. If I were to die today, I'm on my way to heaven because of that. And I know that for sure. That fire is there because I'm saved. I'm a child of God. Would you do this? No one's looking. Would you just slip your hand up? I just want to rejoice with you. I'm on my way to heaven and I know that. Good, 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 good. Good, good. Hands all over. You can put them down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe you're here today and you say, Preacher, I, I couldn't raise my hand. I'm not sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. I'm not sure I have that relationship with Jesus, that fire that you mentioned. I'm not sure that's there because I don't know that I know him. Would you pray for me, Pastor? Listen, I'm not going to call your name or embarrass you. But could I pray for you this morning? I'm just not sure. Would you pray for me? No one is looking. Would you do this? Just, just slip your hand up, slip it right back down. I want to pray for you just a minute. Anybody like that at all? I'm just not sure. Would you pray for me? Just slip it up, slip it right back down. All right. All right, one last question. Entire message. What will you do with the fire that's inside already? I'm not asking you to reinvent the wheel. God's not asking us to come up with some crazy new fangled idea. God is saying this this morning. Will you build what's already there? Will you add the logs? Will you add the fuel? Will your heart be burdened and your vision be bright that say, hey, I want to make a difference for Christ. I want to be on fire. I want to build the fire. Hopefully that's the desire of every Christian this morning. Now I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but I would ask you to do this. We're going to stand in just a moment and sing a verse of invitation. God spoke to your heart. You need to make a decision. That's why we close our service with a song and with an invitation. We invite you to make a decision. Sit right where you're at. You can use an altar. It doesn't matter. God spoke to your heart. You need to build the fire. You need to make a commitment to doing so. You need to ask God to help you and be better at it. I, I don't know the Use the invitation to settle that with Him. And do business with Him as we sing our closing song together this morning. Father, we ask you to bless the invitation now as we stand, as we sing, as we close our service, Lord. I know even in preparing the message, my heart was tugged. My heart was spoken to, Lord. I, I understand uh, the need to do even better in this area. And Lord, I pray that many Christians this morning, their response will be the same. And they'll say, yes, Lord, I'll build the fire. I'll build the fire. I'll shake some things off, but I'll build the fire. And I'll make the difference for Christ like you want me to be and do. Help us, God, uh, to have this unified vision and goal in our hearts and our lives as a church body. And we'll thank you for what you do now in our midst. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Would you go ahead and stand together this morning? We'll sing just a verse or two of closing song, 591. Have thine own way, Lord, as we sing the invitation is open this morning.
best close with a word of prayer. Terry, would you close this morning, please?